Hey everyone, I'm Marvin. You know, because all teachers are leaders, all teachers should be students of leadership and great leaders. And, and history has given us examples of, of many great leaders in the past and present that we can learn from. And today we're going to learn from a great leader. His name is Sam Walton. You may have heard of him. He, he started a small rural store in Arkansas and this store grew into a billion dollar empire. The name of that store is Walmart. And so I came across a blog post, which I will link to in this post so that you can check out the full blog post. It's a, it's a really, really good read. But what the author does is he breaks down the, the 10 key uh, components of Sam Walton's leadership style, the, the things that really made him a great leader. And so we're going to go through these one through 10 very quickly. And then I'm going to talk about what you as a teacher can take from this, how it, how they, how these key components relate to you, what you can do in order to kind of mirror that with your leadership style in the classroom so that you can be more effective to help students. So let's begin. So number one, Sam Walton believed that it is very important to commit to the business, commit to the business. And what this looks like for you as a teacher is that means that you pursue excellence in every thing that you do you know really teaching is an art and, and there are so many components that go into it that means that well, you're, you're excellent in terms of your lesson planning and you use data and you allow that data to help you create the lesson plans that are going to help the students that are in front of you. You're not just taking lesson plans straight from the internet and, and not tailoring them to fit the needs of the students that are in front of you. See, when you're committed, when you're all in, you're doing everything that you can in order to pursue excellence, in order to help serve the students that are in front of you. Number two, Sam Walton believed that it is important to share profits with associates and treat them as partners. Now here's what this means for you as a teacher. Um, I often would tell my students that, you know what, the, the teacher is no better than the students. They just have different responsibilities. And what I did was I created that, that partnership in environment and relationship in my classroom between myself and my students. We're all working together. We've got different responsibilities, different roles, different things that, that we need to do. And it, you, you'll find it, it's really, it's really, it's a wonderful feeling when the, the teacher kind of presents that to the students and because the students, they kind of, you can kind of see that guard comes down on the part of the student when they, when they realize that, oh, you really mean that, you know, we're work, we've got a working relationship. You're, you're listening to the voice of, of the students and you are working together and the teacher is not um, overly imposing and, and just relying on the fact that they're the authority figure in the classroom and the students have to do uh, everything the teacher says it's it's so much better when it's a it's a working partnership and 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 the teacher relies on the students and the students are relying on the teacher in order to get things done so number three sam walton was a belief in motivating your partners and he believed that he actually says here in his autobiography that money is isn't enough to to motivate people and that is so true you know in terms of of motivating um our students, you know, money can only carry you so far. You know, students need to believe that you genuinely care about them. And that's, I think that's the first step in, in terms of being able to motivate students to pursue success, to engage in the classroom and, and do the things that you're asking them to do. And in terms of motivation, getting students energized and moving in the right direction, that takes a lot of strategic thinking that takes a lot of intentional action which is a, a it, that means it, it's great that you're watching these videos because you're learning those tools those intentional steps that you can take in order to motivate your students in order to lead them because when you're tapping into that self-efficacy when you're helping students increase that self-efficacy the, the students actually believe in their own capacity to accomplish goals then you're you're in a great spot because you're not 
not breaking your neck trying to get students engaged because once students get on that winning streak, that's motivation enough to keep them engaged, to keep them moving forward. Number four, Sam Walton believed that if you communicate everything you possibly can to all your partners, that's going to be a better situation because the more everyone knows, the better they will understand. And if people have an understanding, even if it's, a, if it's something, it's a huge change that people aren't necessarily going to like, perhaps if they have as much information as possible, they'll get over it quicker. And I think the same applies to students as well. If you're if you're open and honest 100 percent, you know, there are definitely going to be times when, you know, rules from the district or from the, the building administration, uh, that's it's going to kind of put a wedge between yourself and the students. Well, if you have that open and honest uh, line of communication between yourself and the students, then the students are going to be more apt to, you know, kind of get over it quicker and do the things that need to be done. And then you won't come off as the bad guy and that there won't be that wedge between you and the students. The students will be on your side. And in terms of being open and honest with students, I think that it's imperative to talk about that elephant in the room because at times students they get it in their head that, oh, you only care about test scores. You know, you've got to kind of feel out the room, feel out, you get a feel for what your students are thinking because you don't want, you don't want elephants to, to remain in the room. And I think that's one of the, the, the elephants that, that do exist, one of the, the, the false beliefs that, that are out there at times, especially during testing season when, when they're getting ready to take that test. You, it's your job as a leader. You've got to tackle that. You, you don't want students believing that, you know, you only care about test scores. You've got to, you've got to open that, open those lines of communication. You've got to attack that head on. And, um, I did that. I did that. I did that many times with, with my students. And, and there would be occasions when I would just have a, a frank conversation with my students about the necessity of tests, how far it goes back, the, the, the history of, of public education and, and why we test students, why we test students and, and, and I acknowledge that, yes, it, it's a lot of testing, but this is what we do with the testing. So, you know, in, some, in short, just being open and, and honest with, the, with your students, that is, it, it's a wonderful thing. And again, it, it helps to increase that working partnership that you have with your students and it grows that relationship. Number five, Sam Walton was a believer in showing appreciation for everything the associates did for the business. And, you know, with your students, I, I suggest you have multiple student appreciation days, you know, throughout the year, just letting the students know that you appreciate them. I would, um, I would do uh, just some $5 gift cards um, on the day of student appreciation day. I would give my students a speech, just letting them know I, I appreciate them, acknowledge all the things that they've done and their, their effort. And then I would raffle off a couple of gift cards per class. Now it, you know, it, it did add up, but I think that it was important that my students understood that, you know, I kind of, I went out of my way to, to show my appreciation and I, genu I, I genuinely meant it, you know, when we had a student appreciation day, it wasn't something that, you know, I just checked the box, I, I did it and, and hung something on the wall. So it's like, no, I, from the bottom of my heart, I meant that and my students, they, they felt that as well. And, and again, that's just another thing that, that helps to really grow that relationship and, and it also serves as a, a motivation for students to, to do the things that they need to do because you know especially now there, there are so many distractions so many other things that students could be doing uh, rather than just being in your classroom working and, and those things are on their minds constantly even when they're in your class and they're trying to engage those things are on their mind that that phone is right there, there there's so many other things that they could be doing with that phone so when students are locked in they're doing what they need to do it's imperative that you you show your appreciation so number six this one is a simple one celebrate the success you know one thing that i i would do 
for students who scored the highest score on, on the test is, is I would read off the, the, the top five names of the scores and we have a nice celebration. And then the, the top score, I would play the John Cena theme song and I had a WWE championship belt and I took a picture of the student holding the belt and I put their name on the belt. And you know, the, the, the kids, and they, for them, they, they thought it was corny and yeah, it was probably corny. And the kids, they would act like they didn't like it, but they loved it. That was something that they looked forward to. And so, you know, celebrating that success, that it's just so important, making that a part of your environment, making that a habit, some, making a part of your routine. It's something that we do in this classroom. We celebrate success. And, you know, there are so many things to, to celebrate. There are successes and you've got to find them and you've got to make sure that every student in that class, they have those moments every now and then where everyone, we're just, we're, we're celebrating and, and loving on that student for the, the success that they've achieved. Number seven, Mr. Walton was a firm believer in listening to everyone in the company listening to everyone in the company and hearing them. Now for you as a teacher, there are a number of people who the students see throughout the day that is imperative that you talk to. That could be custodians, librarians, it could be the nurse, social workers, could be the counselors. All of those people have important information that perhaps you need to know about your students in order for you to better serve your students. So for you as a teacher, don't negate the value in talking to those people and reaching out to those people because again, they could help you to turn that situation around with a student who who doesn't want to give effort, whose, whose parent has this way the white flag, they give up, they don't know what to do. Bring in all of those different voices and perhaps you can find the answer. Number eight, Mr. Walton was a believer in exceeding the customer's expectations. And, and for this, I, it's all about the parents. It's, it's all about the parents. So when you think about your parents, make sure that you're giving them the best customer service. Make sure that they have the best experience every time that they talk to you. So that means communicate, communicate, communicate. If things are trending, to, towards the negative side, if Johnny is having some trouble, communicate, let that parent know. Don't wait until the report card comes out to let the parent know that their child isn't doing well. And also, I want you to think about when we talk about exceeding expectations, that also means that, you know, getting back to the parent as soon as possible, not letting a whole lot of time pass before you get back to them. I think 24 hours, that's within that 24 hour window. If you can find a way to work that in, that's, that's very important to do that. How you answer the phone when they call, that's also very important. Put intentional thought in how you are communicating with your parents and how you're treating them. You need to go above and beyond with them. Number nine, Mr. Walton was a believer in controlling your expenses better than your competition. You know, he said that you can make a lot of mistakes and still recover if you run an efficient operation. Now, I want you to think about this. What comes to my mind is time, time. You know, every student, eventually, the clock is ticking. Eventually, there will come that day where they walk across the stage at the end of their senior year in high school. And the world is going to ask, what do you got? And so it doesn't matter if you teach in high school, middle school, elementary school, wherever you teach, your focus is getting that student ready for that day when they walk across that stage. And you see uh, students, typically speaking, they have the, the same amount of time. Schools have the same amount of time with their students. And, and it's all about being efficient with that time and how that time is spent. That's the difference maker, you know, between a good and a bad teacher. And it goes back to the first bullet point. You see, students, they don't have time to wait for their teacher to get it together. You know, you have to be excellent in everything you do. Teaching is an art. That means that when you cook up those lesson plans, you, you're, you're creating lesson plans specifically for the students that are in front of you. That means that you are using, um, using your time strategically 
to, to make sure that you're meeting the needs of students, to make sure that you're getting feedback to students so that they can make the adjustments that they need to make so that they can pursue success. Bottom line, don't waste time mired in mediocrity as it relates to your practice and, and what you do as a professional because ultimately that's going to hurt the students because it's wasting their time and, and every second that goes by, the students are getting closer to that point where they need to walk across the stage. Because when your students walk across that stage and the world asks them, what do you have? You want your students to be able to say, you know what, I've got a lot of confidence, I've got a lot of skills, and I've got a lot of potential that I wanna cash in on. I'm ready to chase my vision of success. And finally, number 10, Mr. Walton was a believer in swimming upstream. And for you, that means taking risks. You gotta take risks. With each day that goes by, you should be a different teacher. You should be a better teacher because you're focused on growth. And when you're focused on growth, when you have that kind of mindset, you think differently. And because you think differently, you act differently. And bottom line, that's going to be better for the students because you're reacting to what you have in front of you. You're adjusting. When you see the students need a little, little bit more in, in this area, you can adjust because you plan well and give the students what they need and still somewhat stay with that, that, uh, so, that seemingly unbelievable, unrealistic pacing guide. So boldly try new things. And when your students see you doing that, they're going to feel encouraged to do the same. So there you have it. Those are 10 key components of Sam Walton's leadership style. Once again, I'm a link to this blog post and in, in within the post here. So thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, never forget that teachers are leaders.